the RV industry might be in really big trouble. Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle. They call me the honey badger because I give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business. And today is your May 2024 RV industry update. If this is the first time that you have visited the channel, I have worked for RV dealerships for almost 15 years. And I've done just about every job you can think of. I've washed them, I've worked on them, I've been a finance manager, a sales manager, a service writer. I've worn just about every hat except for owner. And today I'm gonna update you on RV loans and RV financing. This will include interest rate updates. Okay, the second thing we're gonna cover is the used RV market because it just got more complicated, okay? The third thing I'm gonna talk about is kind of an elephant in the room in the industry, specifically when it comes to frame flex slash frame failure and non-disclosure agreements. And I'm gonna cover a lot of that. Number four, there is a court case out there that is not a part of the industry yet, but may affect the industry in a huge way. So I wanna go over that. And number five, I wanna cover some miscellaneous thing, things, including the closure of one of the better Overland RV manufacturers in the industry. So if you're ready, set, let's go. RV loan and RV interest rate update. Now I'm starting to see a trend where credit unions and banks want customers, even with great credit, to have skin in the game on these RV loans now. Now, even though there are some banks and credit unions that have a zero down program, they're countering asking for at least 10%. This has been a trend that's occurring for the last four or five weeks. And we've run into some people with really amazing credit or they've been with the same credit union for like 15, 20 years and their own credit union wants them to put 10% down. Now, I believe this has something to do with the used RV market. So in the next segment, I'm gonna go deeper into it, okay? But for now, just anticipate that zero down may not work you more than likely may have to come up with at least 10% cash down, uh, even if you have outstanding credit, okay? Now, when it comes to RV interest rates, I need to kind of go back in time for a minute. So Jerome Powell, back in December of 2023, announced that there may be three interest rate cuts in 2024 if inflation gets out of control, but also said that the entire committee would not take raising interest rates off the table. And let's look at inflation. Inflation is still up. It's still really sticky. And in a lot of cases, it has gone up and it's trending upward. So in anticipation of that, a lot of lenders have reached out to me, including credit unions, and said they will more than likely be raising their interest rates here in May of 2024, anywhere between a quarter of a point and half a point, which means worst case scenario, according to how they're looking at it, instead of you having a baseline interest rate at a dealership of 7.99% for excellent credit, you now have a base interest rate of 8.49%. So basically, if you were taking out an, a 20-year loan on a fifth wheel, it's going to affect your payment by about $22, plus whatever your tax is. Okay, So you're going to lose about $22 a month of buying power with this interest rate raise. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't get approved for 7.99, okay? But normally, when I tell you a base rate, usually I'm right around accurate of where your rate's going to be. When I told you folks 799 was the base rate, 
A lot of you reacted going, yeah, we got 774. We got eight and a quarter. We got 799. Okay. In some cases, po folks said we got 749. But that base interest rate gives you an idea. So when you go to your RV calculator to figure out how much coach you can purchase, you now have a baseline rate to use. So that way, when you walk into a dealership or walk into your credit union, you have a basic idea of where things should be. Okay. Now, the last thing I really want to stress to you guys is there's a lot of folks that don't understand that reach out to me and say, I don't understand why I can't get a 20 year loan on a $30,000 coach. Okay. The reason why is there is no program out there for that. Okay. Yes, you can do 20 year financing, but the rule of thumb is you have to be financing more than $50,000 in conjunction that you have to have good credit. Like, and good credit in this industry is not 700. Good credit in this industry is 740 plus. Okay, so a lot of times if you're under seven, if you're between, let's say, 700 and 739, we got about a 50-50 chance of getting you a 20-year loan. Most of the time, when you're under 740, we can basically get you a 15-year loan. A lot of folks also reach out to me because the banks are getting tougher on bankruptcies. Okay, if you have a bankruptcy that's still on your credit history... A regular prime bank that does 20-year loans will not take you, okay? It's going to go to a credit union. And credit unions mostly do 10 to 15-year loans. So just keep those things in mind as you're getting ready. Because remember, as I say, over 85% of RV customers slash consumers take a traditional RV loan out. Used RV market update, and it's not pretty. If you're a dealership or if you're a private party seller, this might make you mad, and it's not my intention. My intention is to educate, okay? We are seeing a very downward trend in what lenders, I'm going to repeat that again, lenders value used travel trailers, toy haulers, fifth wheels, motorhomes, etc., Okay. We're also seeing a trend where banks are not lending as much. Okay, So for example, if a lender thinks the wholesale value of a travel trailer is $15,000, they only want to lend between thirteen dollars and fifteen dollars They want you to put a good chunk of down payment. So if you're buying a trailer retail, that's reasonable for like 18, 19 grand, but the lender sees it valued at $15,000 wholesale, then they really want you to come up with that four or $5,000 difference. And why is that? It's because here in May of 2024, we have seen the wholesale values go down for the second term in a row. So March 1st, 2024, we saw this big, just downward spike, not spike, like downward, like funk of the used RV market. Okay. And now here in May of 2024, we didn't see as big of a drop off, but we saw another drop down in used RV values. So banks are paying attention to that. Lenders are paying attention to that. And what they're doing is they're like, hmm, we want to make sure as they devalue, as they depreciate, the customer and us are in a decent position. So they're wanting to make sure that you have some good skin in the game. Now, does that mean there isn't exceptions? Of course there's exceptions. But like one of the biggest reasons I am able to sell my used inventory quickly is I keep up with these trends. So that way I can make sure all of my trades are priced appropriately to the actual market. And what we're running into is a trend. 
where private party sellers and even dealerships who overpaid for inventory, and this is specific to dealerships more than private party sellers, because there was this big trend of these big corporate dealerships buying up all kinds of used at premium prices, and they're still, to this day, trying to get what they paid for it rather than taking the loss. That's why we're seeing this trend where used RVs, specifically motorhomes, are not moving at the pace they should. Now, as far as customers who owe a bunch of money and don't have the funds to write their rig down, that's a tougher conversation to have. I run into that a lot, where people assume that because they paid 90 grand for their fifth wheel and now they owe 60 that their rig's worth 60 when in reality it's probably worth 30 and that's the kind of trend we're running into okay so that down payment trend i talked about in the last segment has to do with a lot of the fact that number 1 dealerships are selling new inventory travel trailers toy haulers fifth wheels motorhomes for dramatically less than they were a year and a half ago, okay? Number two is a lot of people, a lot of customers, and a lot of dealerships paid premium prices for used inventory and did not put a lot of money down, and in dealership cases did not write the inventory down to make sure that managers were incentivized to move the inventory. See, not everyone in the industry has done all the jobs or understands how the dealership works, how cash flow works, how floor plan works, how interest rates work. A lot of folks don't have all the ins and outs. Very few of us do. Had no like the whole landscape of it, okay? And because of that, there's there's a trend where managers are like, I'm not taking a loss because I don't get paid on losses. And unfortunately, they don't understand the concept that even if you have multiple locations and you're a corporate dealership, if your cash flow is not there, you might get shut down. So just a word of advice to anyone selling, including private party, you're overpriced to the market. And that's not something to, be met, to, to tell you demonstratively. It's just unfortunately a fact. And if you're not willing to take a loss or you're not willing to take a big loss, you might want to hold on to your RV for a little while longer. Who knows? Maybe the banks and credit unions in three or four years will loosen up and give bigger, what we call loan to value loans. Okay. But for right now, for the next two, three years, for the foreseeable future, until things completely balance out, it's going to be tough. And just keep in mind, too, even if you waited two or three years, the book value is not going to go up on your trade. It's going to continue to go down. So even if you wait, you may still get the same money three years from now that you could today. So just think about that, okay? As Monty Python would say, and now for something completely different, non-disclosure agreements. <laughs> A gentleman named Greg Carson, YouTube channel Cruising with the Carsons, released the non-disclosure agreement he has with Grand Design RV. Now, there has been a lot of speculation and rumor that the non-disclosure agreement people have to sign with Grand Design, whether they're being bought out or having their frame failure fixed, the speculation was that they're making you take down your social media posts and your videos that speak negatively about this problem. Now, Greg, if you haven't seen his videos prior, I'll link his channel in the description box below so you can see that video I'm talking about, plus the others. His solitude had a really bad frame problem. Huge. Okay, in fact, his wife was in the coach when they were testing it, and it almost fell over. If not, I think it probably did fall over. Okay. Now, in his non-disclosure agreement, what has been speculated is pretty much true. 
with the exception of how it's worded, okay? The way it's worded in the clause is that Greg has to voluntarily remove his YouTube channel and videos. Imagine that. So let me, let's, let's, let's think about this for a second, just for a moment, okay? Why? Now, non-disclosure, let me start with this. Non-disclosure agreements are very normal when it comes to buyouts. I have seen a ton of them from different companies, from the Thor Industries to Forest River. I've seen a ton of them. Not one of them have I ever seen that kind of clause inside of it, okay? And we've seen a lot of people with frame failure and frame flex that have gotten it fixed, let's say as goodwill or under warranty, and they don't have to silence themselves. They still talk about it. Um, Tom still talks about it, if you know who that is, okay? I'll link his channel in the description box too, so you guys can also check out his problem he had with a Columbus fifth wheel back in 2017, okay? So it makes me wonder and makes me think, what is Grand Design hiding? Why do they feel like they have to hide and sweep all these problems under the rug? Wouldn't you think if they're doing the right thing, if they're doing the right thing as a company, wouldn't you think you'd want people to know there was a problem and here's a solution and the solution worked and everybody's excited? Wouldn't you like to rebuild your brand image right now since the image of Grand Design RV amongst the RV community is highly despicable? So let's think about this. You've tri you've allegedly, and this is allegedly, you have allegedly, through customer communications to me, have treated customers like absolute garbage when it comes to frame failure or frame flex, okay? Then you are being accused as an, as, as by customers, not by me, but by customers, you're being accused publicly of always pointing the finger at Lippert instead of just dealing with the problem. And number three, you're being accused of not covering people's hotel or motel bills while you have their rig for a couple of weeks trying to fix the problem. So you have this really negative image and now you want to throw non-disclosure agreements that non-disclosure agreements that have this clause in there that's worded just so politically correct. It makes you wonder why are you hiding this? What do you have to hide? And I'll leave that one up to you. RV factories, and I mean all RV factories might be in big trouble. Now, in past videos, I have talked about the deteriorating relationship between RV factories and RV dealerships, okay? And the main reason why is because RV dealerships feel like they had all this overpriced inventory shoved on their lot when the market was going down. So when the market had a big downturn starting in the middle of 2022, they were pissed because the factories kept wanting to shove inventory on their lot when they weren't selling that much. And now, over the last 18 months, they have been taking massive losses to get rid of some of this high-priced inventory with very little to zero factory support. Okay. Now, I've said in the past, I believe the factories are 50% 50, 50 responsible and the dealerships are 50% 50, 50 responsible so they should split the loss. But see, the RV factories have the wrong mindset. And this lawsuit I'm gonna talk about here is gonna probably make them crap their pants, okay? So give you a little background. To get any of the factory money, the super majority of factories want you to stay overstuffed with inventory, even though we are in a huge economic downturn. Imagine that. They want to keep shoving stuff out the door when the market's down. Makes sense to you? So let me read this. And again, I'm going to link this article in the description box. So there's going to be a lot of material from this video you guys can read over. But I'm only going to read one part of this article. You need to, you can read the rest. It's mostly about M&T Bank and stuff like that, which I'm going to talk about in the next segment. 
but it says Tommy's Boats sued Malibu Boats. Tommy's Boats is a pretty decent sized boat dealership, okay? Malibu Boats is a factory for boats. They're a manufacturer of boats. So Tommy's sued Malibu on April 10th, 2024, alleging that Malibu and its CEO, Jack Springer, engaged in an elaborate scheme to, listen to this, over-manufacture and pump nearly $100 million of its high-priced inventory, highest margin inventory, slow-moving inventory into 15 Tommy's dealerships to artificially inflate Malibu sales performance, artificially claim increased market share in the industry, and artificially inflate its stock value during an obvious downturn in the market. RV dealerships will not talk about this to factories. If the factories bring it up to RV dealers, they're going to play dumb. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. But I can guarantee you that everyone from the corporate level all the way down to mom and pop is paying attention and talking about this amongst themselves. Because here's the, here's the case. This is why every RV factory should be crapping their pants right now. Because if Malibu Boats loses this case or settles this case out of court, you're going to watch a mass, huge movement of RV dealerships basically putting in lawsuits for the same reason that Tommy's put theirs in. It will be nuts. Okay? So this is something to pay attention to. It's going to take a little while. Now, for those of you customers going, well, that's a great thing. That's going to really help us out. No, it won't help you out get a better deal. This isn't The only thing this is going to affect is what will affect on the consumer level is you'll see factories start to shut down just because they won't be able to cover the lawsuit. Okay. Now, some of your really big manufacturers are not going to be affected that greatly. Okay, some of your super big ones, but a lot of your really tiny ones that decided to play that game, that decided, we'll use the words greed, they got greedy, they might not be around. So let's pay attention to this lawsuit, because this lawsuit is going to have ramifications. And by the way, it's not just going to have ramifications on the RV industry. It'll have ramifications on the car industry, the rest of the boat industry the power sports industry, it will have a major ripple effect across the entire spectrum. And I, you know who I feel bad for? Do you know who loses in this? It isn't the dealership. It isn't the customer or the consumer or the RV community. It's the factory workers. They're the ones that are going to suffer for this if this goes down this way. So if I'm the RV factory, I'm crapping my pants right now, pretty much. On April 25th, 2024, an RV manufacturer named Earth Cruiser went out of business. They mainly dealt with like 4x4, off-grid, off-road type of motorhomes, okay? And it's sad because they were really well built, they were very good quality, and they were very innovative. And I don't think they're the last one that's going to go out of business this year. I think this is just the beginning. We've had now, I think, four manufacturers, small manufacturers go out of business. Earth Cruiser, watch this, started in 2008. Survived the whole economic recession from 08 to 2011 until things kind of turned around for the industry. That just shows you how bad the perceived economy is. The government can tell us, oh, it's great. Oh, we're up. Oh, we're this. But it's not reflective in any of the industries. Car industries, extremely slow. Boat industry, extremely slow. Power sports outside of the Razor Pro R, slow. RV industry, Hit or miss. 
We have some areas of the country doing well and other areas of the country doing very poorly. So this is going to be a ripple effect, you know. And here's the thing. There's a, a place called Mox RV, M-O-I-X. And they're opening the first Brinkley exclusive dealership. To me, that in this economic environment, that is just plain stupid. Okay? You can't put all your eggs into this one basket. Okay? Look, I've heard a lot of mixed reviews from customers about Brinkley that don't post their mixed reviews online. Okay? In fact, eventually I'm going to fly out and actually get to film and do my own review of Brinkley. Of course, hint, hint, uh, there may be some breaking news eventually with them. Anyway, long story short, you're starting to see people retract out of the RV industry. And we saw this happen in 08, 9, and 10, where you had a lot of manufacturers start going out of business. M&T Bank is rumored to be pulling out of the retail side of the RV industry, meaning the last bank that has an auto approval program that doesn't require us to run your credit a million times, if you get my drift, that's exaggeration, okay, may be pulling out. Now, they haven't made it official. There's nothing official about it yet. And there may never be. Hopefully, they change their minds. Hopefully, that's something I hope they change their minds on. But apparently, with the rumors going around that dealerships across the United States, all kinds of them, from car, boat, RV, etc., are not paying their interest payments or their what we call curtailments to M&T Bank. I could see why they want to get out. You know, there's just so much going on in the industry that, you know, we have flatlined on pricing. It's not going to crash any more than it has, okay? Used RV pricing is going to go down in the perception of the banks. But the perception of customers, it's going to take a while for them to change their minds. That, oh, wow, well, I've had this up for a year and I can't get what I want out of it. Maybe I should lower my price. And dealerships are going to be the same way. Like, wow, we haven't sold this thing in like two years. I'm going to force my managers to sell this at a loss. Or I'm going to have to incentivize them to sell it at a loss so I can get my cash back. So those are things that you kind of have to look at. One thing I would tell everybody, just, just, just in general, okay, is don't take J.D. Power as the Bible, okay? J.D. Power is a guideline, especially the retail side. Look, if you're a seller or a buyer, stop adding the options. Stop it. Adding the options does not help you. All it does is make, give you a fairy tale. It's like Tinkerbell throwing fairy dust on you saying, you can fly in your Never Never Land. Look at the base pricing on retail. The low retail, the high retail, your rig's probably worth somewhere in between there. That's reality. That's what the real value of it's going to be on the retail market. Okay, That's you selling it privately. That's if your rig is in perfect shape. If there's things wrong with it, if there's, you know, things that need to be fixed, if there's, you know, been accidents, if you have frame failure slash frame flex, that's going to change the value of your actual rig. And the last thing I'm going to say on this is dealerships do know about frame failure and frame flex, Okay. Specifically with Grand Design Solitude, Grand Design Momentum, and even now Keystone Montana High Country. Okay? They're all aware of it. So don't be surprised if you start getting hit really hard on your trade-in value. Okay? No matter if you have the problem or not. Whether you get the problem fixed or not. Okay? Dealerships... In most dealerships, in most states, don't want the liability. Because let's, let's just say, for example, you sell a used momentum as a dealership and something happens where the frame snaps and the car falls or the, the fifth wheel 
comes detached from the pin box or whatever the case may be, and it falls on a sedan with a mom and two kids and severely injures them or possibly un unalives them, okay? In that case, more than likely, the lawyers are going to go after the dealership as well as the manufacturer. So a lot of dealerships are going to be like, you know what, I'll just send this to the auction. Hopefully some idiot picks it up. Okay. Or there's going to start being verbiage in the contract saying you are taking this unit as is and the dealership wants no responsibility for it. Like we're not going to do a walkthrough. We're not going to look at anything. We're not going to fix anything. We're not even going to test anything. It's as is. It's on you. Service isn't even going to touch it outside of a brake inspection and a propane leak test. We don't, we're not going to do anything else. Everything else is on you. So there's a possibility of that kind of stuff happening. Is it going to happen tomorrow? No. Is it going to happen six months from now? Maybe. I don't, I can't, I don't have a crystal ball to it, but I can tell you that those conversations are happening. And if dealerships are not admitting that to you, it's because it's a quiet thing. A lot of dealerships are not going to tell you what they're thinking because, A, you know, there's a saying in this industry, stay dumb. A lot of guys tell salespeople, stay dumb. Because sales guys, especially ones that are not very well versed in how things are manufactured and how things work, can either oversell or say the wrong thing to a customer. So they always just say, ain't it pretty, don't you want to buy it? So with that being said, they don't want to take the big liability of used, especially with frame flex and frame failure, especially with these three particular brands, okay? And there may be more to come. I don't know. Only the future can tell. Now, the one thing I will tell you, though, is if you have questions about how RV financing really works and you're looking for the basics... There's a video for you right there.